Hello and welcome back to the School Heat YouTube channel and welcome to match day number 15, I believe it is. It is number 15. Had to look at the table. Number 15 and it's going to be Liverpool versus West Ham where Liverpool are coming off one of the worst losses that we've had since our last title running season um, when we lost against Crystal Palace. Had those consecutive lo those losses against... Uh, sorry, we didn't lose against Crystal Palace. We drew against Crystal Palace. That demoralising 3-3 and Suarez cried at the end. It was abysmal. Hard to watch. This was hard to watch as well. It's one of those games, we played well first half, didn't play exceptionally well, didn't play outstanding, didn't play gobsmackingly awesome, but we got a couple of good goals, 2-0 going into half time, we were 3-1 up at one point, you go on to lose 4-3, what can I say, we were, we capitulated in the second half capitulated in the second half now one of the main things that's come out obviously since this is the media and the, like opposition fans and some of our own fans as well saying that carrius is the worst thing that we've ever had since sliced bread i don't know something bad anyway that he's the worst player that we've ever had um and i would counter that with let's have a look at the career of david de gea okay if you go back to 2012 and i went back and googled 2012 um, and I looked at David De Gea. I just all I googled was David De Gea worst goalkeeper ever. And you get loads of articles from 2012 of loads of different media outlets and Man United fans and stuff like that saying that he was the worst goalkeeper they'd ever had because he was having some blunders here and there. They stuck with him, and he's one of the best goalkeepers in the world. They stuck with him through thick and thin. They bled him in. There was one point where they were going to bring in um, what was his name? I think I've got it up here. Uh, his name was uh, Anders Lindegaard that was going to take over. They stuck with him and look at the goalkeeper that David De Gea is now because they had faith in him. And when we have the same thing again, when we have Joel Matip back in play, which he should be back in play this weekend, I believe he is fit and past fit to be in that back four this weekend, it's a lot more solid. Now, as Jurgen Klopp came out and said as well, when you look at most of their goals that Bournemouth scored last week, there was opportunities, and especially that last goal as well, there was opportunities up the pitch that should have been able to stop it before it got to carry us. Now, yes, a goalkeeper should be able to then get themselves into some certain positions and be able to, you know, make some the right decisions, come to the ball or stay off the ball and get the, you know, save the shot and stuff like that, whatever. But then there's also opportunities where, you know, you'll see pundits and some fans say, oh, there's absolutely nothing that goalkeeper could do about that shot. Well, which one is it? Okay, because which one... It's either they could have stopped the shot or they couldn't have stopped the shot. But Carrius is getting hammered left, right and centre at the moment because of this blunder. But let's also look at the previous games that we've just had. Yes, we got that... The, looking at these last six anyway. We're going to look at the last six as we always do. 4-2 against Palace. We were conceding goals, but we were scoring. Nobody's really, you know, harping on about it. We get a 6-1 against Watford. Definitely no one's harping on about it. 0-0 Southampton. 2-0 against Sunderland. 2-0 against Leeds. Everyone's quite, okay, yeah. And I know um, Mignolet was in goal for the Leeds game there. But what can I say? It's one of those things. He's a young goalkeeper, Carrius. He's not the youngest in terms of goalkeepers when you look at the likes of Donnarumma and such like that in Serie A. But... He's still a young goalkeeper. He is a good goalkeeper in some, you know, in some ways. He's a bad goalkeeper in other ways. But it's certainly not one of those things where I'd be like, get rid of the bastard because he's not going to be good enough. You stick with him. When we've had consistent back four and goalkeeper, we've been playing pretty well. Putting Lucas in that back four was a mistake, in my opinion. Even though he played the first half quite well, they were quite clearly either... Well, they said, they said it themselves... Bournemouth said that they were set out to target Carrius and they ta and it worked. But by putting Lucas in defence didn't work for me. It really didn't work for me. I would have put Clavin in. I don't know what Clavin's got to do to get in this team when Matip isn't in and he's actually a centre-back. Whereas Lucas didn't come into this team as a centre-back. He came in as a centre-mid uh, or defensive mid, whichever. You know, it makes sense for me to go to have gone for Clavin instead. Someone who, who will give you a bit of grit, will fight. We maybe would have won that game or at least drawn it. But we have to move on. I would stick with a pretty similar team selection as we do. I think there's rumours that Klopp's looking at maybe mixing around with the midfield a, a great a little bit. And obviously, we're still going to be missing Coutinho. So the main news for me is that Matip is apparently going to be coming into the team and that's going to be massive as long as he is fit to play, like 100% fit or as fit as he can be. That is the main thing there. I would, you know, Origi has been doing doing pretty well when he gets in there. Mane is apparently going to be past 100% fit as well. So that's going to be really, really good because it was worrying when he hobbled off. 
last week against Bournemouth. Now we have a look at West Ham. Now West Ham, wow. Didn't realise their form was that bad at the moment, but again, it's one of those. It doesn't necessarily matter about form in some of these games, it just doesn't. West Ham were our bogey team last season, and they beat us three times. What can, You know, I know they're not playing like they did last season, but they've got the ability to, they've got the players to do it. Does Payet turn up and have an absolutely blinding game or something like that and runs? Who knows? Anything could happen, but they lost 4-1 against... Uh, Man United, they've lost 5-1 against Arsenal in their last game and that was a strange one watching it because it was like it got late on into the game when they started conceding goal after goal after goal and it was weird to watch because it looked like when it goes 1-1 you're like alright, okay, maybe West Ham are going to start turning around their season a little bit again, turning it around again but they've had just some just some weird results like they got a draw against United three, lost 3-2 against Tottenham draw against Stoke and lost against Everton who Everton can't buy a win full of no money at the moment so it's one of these games that we have to take advantage of Klopp says that the team are angry and it's angry at themselves they, they want to be out, be going out there and obliterating teams that's what they want to be doing and not and I don't mean obliterating like let's put eight goals past them I mean like tear that team apart and do the best that they can our team is capable of good things on their day and this has to be one of their days there's nowhere that we can go right now, literally at this moment, 60 minutes into the Leicester Man City match, and Leicester are 3-0 up against Man City. So at the moment, it looks like we can't go anywhere apart from third place. We can't drop any lower unless somewhere, out of nowhere, Man City pull off this hell of a victory or something like that, or even a draw against Leicester, who are like peppering them with shots left, right and centre. It looks like we can still stay third. That's not necessarily a bad position to be in. The only concern is... If we if we don't win this game, like say if we lose it or we draw it, we're not going to be able to make up that much ground on the two that are in front, which is Arsenal and Chelsea, who Arsenal had a very good game today as well. So it's one of those, we do have to go and win it. I think we can go and win it. I think the team that we put out, if we have like the likes of Mane, Origi, Firmino, that'll be pretty decent. If we can get Lallana back in there somehow, I'd rather Lallana being in the team starting than coming on for Mane because I, I felt... The intensity of our team went went down when Mane had to come off and Lalana was brought in. Not that that was Lalana's fault, it's just the dynamic of the team changed. We were 3-1 up, Mane goes off. Look, the mentality of the team just changed. And that, that's my opinion of it anyway. You guys might disagree, but let me know what you think anyway. I'd like to see Lalana in there, Henderson, uh, Wijnaldum, you know, Emre Chan, whichever. Wijnaldum or Chan, I'm not entirely bothered. Um, back four, I'd keep it with Matip, Lovren. Uh, Milner and Klein I don't think they've done a great deal wrong apart from the last game and I think it could be one of those it's just maybe just a bit of a blip if it is a blip great if it ends up being something that's worse then obviously yeah you have to start looking at changing things but and I'd also keep Karius in there I would keep Karius in there he's come out with some fighting words against some pundits against Gary Neville especially um, but I think it's one of those we stick with the team that we've had we've been doing well we've this is going to be our 15th game in the season tomorrow. We've lost twice. I know people are saying, oh, but Leicester last year, they, they, they lost only three times. And it's like, yeah, that's cool and all, but you guys are getting carried away in the title talk. You're getting carried away. Do not get carried away in title talk, otherwise you get made to look stupid afterwards. 2025 games is a sensible one for us, in my opinion, to be starting to think about us being in the title race. People think, oh, well, you're like four points behind. You could be one point behind come tomorrow if you win, or three points, whatever. It, you, you're right there. Why don't you want to start talking about title talk? Because we end up looking stupid. We go on like, we had like a 15 game unbeaten streak, right? We lose one game. During that, before we lost that game, the media and everything are absolutely banging on about Liverpool being in the title race. We lose against Bournemouth. Liverpool will be lucky to get top four. And I remember seeing that on a Sky Sports article. You know, the media are fickle. That's just how it is. Do not be drawn in by the media. Go with your own thoughts. Enjoy the football that we play. When we make it work, if we lose, we lose. Get behind the team again. It doesn't matter. It's not like we're going to get relegated or anything like that. Keep going, keep going, and keep going. We've got to be positive. Get behind the team. I think that we can win this one. West Ham look abysmal. And that's not me just being like picking on West Ham. West Ham picked on Liverpool all of last year. Like, there were some West Ham fans that were pretty damn bad about Liverpool all year. Because, yes, they got three victories over us. Congratulations. That's absolutely brilliant. But there were some that were like, that really wanted to tear us apart. They had one good season out of how many? 
and now they're back down to their usual place. So, in my opinion, I don't really... They have been abysmal. And that, that's probably being kind, actually, me saying that they've been abysmal. They have not lived up to their expectations. And with players like Payet, who Payet is a good is a good player, but I have said it before that they cannot rely on Payet to do everything for them. They cannot rely on it. They just can't rely on that. They have to be organised. They have to get some strikers that don't get injured every five minutes. Now, we have our own in Daniel Sturridge, but you guys apparently want to buy him as well. So, I mean... How many strikers do you want on your medical bench? Seriously. Genuinely. Anyway, let's get back to the game. And I do think that Liverpool can come out with the victory in this one. I think it's going to be a tight game. I will. I think that West Ham are going to come in looking at, like, we want to get a win. We want to do everything we can. I think they're going to try and try and be as solid as they can at the back. But if they play anywhere like they did against Arsenal, I think we'll definitely be getting the win. Which is why I'm going to go for a 2-1 victory. Quite conservative, but it's a sensible one for me. The worst result that we could get is a loss, obviously. Um, but I also think that we can get the win. I definitely think we can get the win. If we start with the likes of Origi, who seems to be finding some form, finding the back of the net in some outrageous ways. Mane is playing quite well. I've got to go for 2-1. I think Liverpool are going to get this one and West Ham will have another loss on their record. So if you've enjoyed this video, please drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. Keep the faith, Liverpool fans. We will do well again. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll catch you later.